so earlier we were talking about um, figuring out the exposure of the window frame based on the rain screen, the doubling up of the uh, strapping to allow for the trim to overlap your cladding, and then having a logical size uh, um, trim return on the, the edges of the window. Uh, so what I determined is that uh, using a uh, one by two was perfect. It came right to the um, face of the uh, of the sheathing, and that if I then uh, rebated the window into the opening by three eighths of an inch, it would give me that nice three eighths inch uh, sealant joint uh, between the window frame and the uh, trim return. I marked. Uh, I temporarily placed the window in the opening at that location and then I put in the angle uh, back sill or, or back stop, whatever you want to call it, um, into the, the, the sill of the rough opening uh, so that it would be right up against the back face of the window frame. Now if I was doing all of this again, you'll remember back that I put some peel and stick uh, into the rough opening first. Uh, if I was doing all of this again, I would put in the uh, the angle first, then I would put in the, the peel and stick over top of it. Um, to compensate for uh, the fact that I put the peel and stick in first, I ran a bead of uh, joint and seam uh, to make this uh, waterproof. I still have the peel and stick below, which is providing that capillary uh, uh, diffusion break between the sill and the structure below, uh, but this gives me a nice watertight, vapor tight assembly. Uh, all I'm going to do now is do a little bit of fast flash and then later on I'll seal the back of the window frame to the uh, front face of this sill to provide the, uh, the seal at the bottom and then the window actually gets screwed in at this uh, location. Uh, the reason you want a, uh, a backstop is this is a nice way to shed water away from this interface, uh, this horizontal interface where you could have sitting water. If you didn't have this, you have a much higher risk of water going into the assembly or into the interior as, a bit, as opposed to being shed uh, outwards. Uh, if you want to start getting really fancy, uh, which you might want to do in a high exposure area, you would want this sill to be sloped. Uh, cant to outward so that it, it was shedding water. And there's a little bit of a debate uh, how much of a slope would you need before you didn't have to worry about making this vapor tight because you would never have sitting water. Uh, I'm letting the scientists uh, discuss that. I don't know the answer. Uh, so my, uh, my thing will be always to put uh, something vapor and watertight on the sill until uh, I learn otherwise. Okay, so uh, I've detailed this with the uh, joint and seam. Now I'm going to put, and that's already set up, now I'm going to put some fast flash on to finish off uh, that, uh, that part of the detail. And we're just out of fast flash, so that's it for fast flash. Uh, so let's see how much of this I can detail out. As you can tell, this was a, a wet day. I don't have standing water. I do have a little bit of moisture there, and uh, it's it's not a problem. This stuff cures uh, in the in the presence of uh, moisture. Just that easy. Thanks for watching. So the first steps in uh, installing the window is to uh, install the uh, shims on the bottom that will uh, center the window in the rough opening as well as provide that capillary break uh, underneath the window. Uh, obviously you want to make sure these are installed in a way that they do not capture water so you install them where the U is uh, shedding to the exterior. Uh, they come in various sizes, a quarter inch, uh, eighth of an inch and even a sixteenth of an inch. That allows you to correct the, uh, the um, plumb of the window within the rough opening and ensure that it is uh, perfectly level. Uh, so we're going to go ahead now, now that we've installed the shim, we're going to go ahead and slide the window in from behind and uh, start detailing it. <laughs> 